So in the last video, I said to you guys that I was going to do a video, video about central banking. And that's what we're here to do today. Today we're going to talk specifically about the Federal Reserve, uh, which is the American version of a central bank. And even if you're not American, it's still going to be important for you to know how this one works. Because America is such a massive economy that anything that's affected in their economy actually affects the rest of the world. So, bef before we get into that, make sure you hit the like button because it actually supports me in what I'm doing and this video gets recommended more. And then while you're at it, you might as well subscribe because I plan on making some halfway decent content at some point. So, without further ado, we're going to talk about the Federal Reserve. This time, I promise I'm going to spell it correctly. Correctly. So I talked about it in the last video. It was established in 1913 under the Federal Reserve Act. And it was established with two, two main aims. The first one being price stability. Price stability. Now what does that mean? That means the cost of uh, any good, say 100 grams of chicken, is going to be the same today as it is tomorrow. That's, that's price stability. The next aim is to maximise unemployment. No, no, no sorry. <laughs> maximise employment. Somebody who maximises unemployment isn't very good at managing economy. So maximising unemployment, the, and we can actually call these two main aims the dual, the dual mandate of the Federal Reserve. So whenever you hear anybody talking about the dual mandate, it's these two things here. So we've talked about the aims, let's move on to how it's structured. So, Federal Reserve is colloquially the shortened version of what it, what it actually is, which is the Federal Reserve System. And how is this system, system set up? Well, there's 12 smaller district banks. 9, 10, 11, 12. So there's... 12 of these smaller district banks, each with their own president. There, there's one in Boston, one in New York, one in Philadelphia, one in St. Louis, and then there's some scattered around the rest of the country. Now, the St. Louis one's quite cool because they collect a lot of the economic data about the United States economy. Uh, they collect the unemployment rate, they collect the consumer confidence rate. It's a um, I encourage you to, to head to their website, which is FRED, I believe, for Federal Reserve Economic Data. Uh, you can see some of the prevailing economic indicators at the moment. Now, you've got these 12 district banks, and they're all oversaw by a centralised one in Washington, D.C. And so there's, it's these people in the overseer mode who affect the rest of the Federal Reserve system. Now, who, who sits here? It's actually seven board members. Seven board members vote on, on the policy that's followed by the rest of these 12 banks. Seven board members. And who appoints these members? How, how do they get the job of overseers of the Fed? Well, the president, i.e. Big Donald at the moment, uh, says who he wants as the next board member. Then, once he's nominated that person, the United States Senate then says either yes or no. And so that's how the, the seven board members get chosen. There's two important members of this. So out of the seven, there is a chair and there is a vice chair. The chair is the guy in charge or the gal in charge who, who, who sort of sets the... the the way they want to move the, the policy, and the vice chair is obviously second in command. These two are also nominated by the president and appointed, uh, sorry, and approved by 
the Senate. Uh, at the moment, Big Donald appointed this guy called Jerome Powell, and he's an important guy. So remember him, because he's the guy currently who, who you could argue is one of the most powerful people in the world. He is the guy who's affecting, who has a massive effect on the United States economy. So keep an eye out for him. Before that, it was Janet Yellen, um, and then before her, Ben Bernanke, before him, Alan Greenspan. So, if you've heard those names before, then well done, extra points for you. Now what we're going to talk about is how, do, how, does the, how does this Federal Reserve affect the economy? Well, currently it, it wants to balance these two, price stability and, and employment. And the current, the current um, what do you call it, the prevailing sentiment among uh, economists is that inflation and uh, employment are actually positively correlated. So as, in, as uh, people get more jobs, as more people are employed, the, they have more money to spend and that means they have more uh, there's, there's, they can bid up the price of goods, they can buy more goods, and so the demand goes up. And if the demand goes up, supply stays constant, the price will rise. So that's why you have this, this sentiment that these, this is how it works. And if anybody wants to look at this, this up in more detail, this is called the Phillips Curve. Uh, the Phillips Curve actually uses unemployment on this bottom one here, and they have like a, a decreasing curve or something like that, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, have a look at that um, and get some more details on that. Uh, but yeah, this this isn't really the best model to have to have a look at how you set policy because in the 1970s, 1970s we had something called uh, stagflation. Stagflation is where the economy stagnates, so stays at the same level or even decreases, while at the same time having price inflation. So there's a counter example. To this this model, uh, but they, the 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 Fed still uses it somewhat to try and set policy. So you can disagree with that, agree with that, but that's what they that's what they do. That's, that's what, how they try and affect it. So how are they going to try and meet these aims? The dual, how are they going to try and meet their dual mandate? Well, the idea is if they affect the interest rates, if they say move interest rates lower. The more that means the more people can borrow money, and if more people can borrow money, more people can start businesses, more people can employ people, and so employment will rise. At the same time as that, if more people have more money, maybe the price of goods go up. So they're trying to balance these two. So how do they do it? So they're going to talk. They're going to try and affect the the interest rates that banks loan between themselves. So bank to bank. Because banks can lend to many people, they can lend to businesses, they can lend to consumers, but they can also lend to other banks. So let's say that, uh, so, so yeah, they're trying, to affect, they're trying to affect the interest rate of the banks lending between each other because the idea is once you affect this rate, it will trickle through to the, the interest rate for businesses, the interest rate for consumers. That's the idea. So let's say bank A wants to borrow, wants to lend, sorry, 50 billion to bank B, whilst at the same time, bank C is going to lend 40 billion to bank D. Now, this one's going to be at a 3% interest rate, because maybe bank A doesn't really trust bank B that much, and this one's maybe at 2% because these guys are best friends. What the Federal Reserve looks at, it looks at these, these uh, rates and it tries to, it, it, well, it calculates what the average is. So the average of this one is going to be 2.5%. So, so they look at the average of all the loans between all the different banks for a given period and they call this, the average, they call this the effective Fed funds rate. Now why do they have to specify the effective rate? 
Well, the effective means the one that it's actually right, that the, the re interest rate that it is actually at right now. The reason they say that is because they also have something called a target rate. Target rate. So they're trying to, they're trying to change this effective rate to their target rate. But ha who sets the target rate and how? So remember the, uh, the district banks I was talking about earlier? They all have their own presidents. So there's 12 presidents of the, 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 in total of the district banks. Now they sit on this FOMC. FOMC is the people who set the, the target interest rate. This stands for, let me write this properly because it's important, Federal Reserve, sorry, sorry, Federal Open Market Committee. So the Federal Open Market Committee, the Federal comes from the Federal Reserve. Open Market, because what this committee does, whenever the committee wants to try and change that target rate, what they'll do is they'll, do, they'll commit to what we call Open Market Operations, and I'll talk about those in a second. Committee, because those are the people on it. So there's, the tw there's, there's actually the seven board members, board members from earlier, there's seven of them, but on top of that, there's five of those district bank presidents. So there's the 12 of them, five of them get selected in addition to this board member to make up a total of 12 voters in this committee. So now these 12 members are going to be voting on what this new target rate should be. Now, say, they, say the, current, the current effect, the effective rate, the effective federal funds rate is 3% and they want to move it towards their chosen target rate of 2%. How are they going to do this? Well, let's, let's say that this box here is the Fed and this circle here is Bank A. It could be uh, either JP Morgan Chase it could be uh, Morgan Stanley, it could be Goldman Sachs, one of those. What the Fed will do, if they want to move towards a lower rate, is they will buy loans from the bank in return for what colloquially people call dollars. So if you watched my last video, a dollar is not a dollar, you'll know that the Fed gives Federal Reserve notes in return for the loans. Now, most people will call this money, and so if, the, if this bank is getting money in return for the loans, the supply of money will go up in the bank. And if we think about what interest rate is, it's the price to borrow money, right? So the more, the, the bigger the supply of the money, with a constant demand for that money, will mean a reduction in the price to, to borrow that money. So by buying these loans off the banks, they are decreasing the interest rates because there's more currency and in, in, there's more money in circulation. Now, say conversely, that they wanted to move the target rate up, so say it was the effective rate is at 2% and they want to move it to 3%, well obviously all they, all they have to do is reverse this, right? They can sell back their loans that they bought earlier to the bank in return for Federal Reserve notes, thereby reducing the supply of money and so increasing the cost to borrow it, and so the rates will rise. So that's all it is, it's quite simple. Whenever you hear anything in the news saying, oh, the Bank of England has increased interest rates, uh, the Federal Reserve has increased interest rates, that's all they're doing. They're, they're, doing, they're buying and selling these loans between the banks, and I talked about the open market operations earlier, that's what this is. This is a form of open market operation.
buying and selling loans from banks. There, there's, there's, there's a few other open market operations, but I don't have time to go into it in this video. If you want to look it up, the Federal Reserve does a thing called, uh, has a thing called the discount rate, which is the cost to borrow money directly from the Fed, the Fed to borrow it directly. So have a look at that. That's how the Federal Reserve System works. I'll talk. I, I might do another video about the Bank of England if you want. If you want me to do about that, so to let me know in the comments. That uh, oh, and before I go, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe, because my videos are only going to get better as I get better at talking and speaking. Even though I'm already amazing at that, but once I get better at all the other things like the lighting, the camera. So that's it. Thank you very much. See you next time.